uh, in a linguistic term, was used for agricultural purposes. Someone who covers uh, the, the seed. So in Islamic terminology, a kafir is a person who rejects the truth knowingly, right? Now, I want to ask you this simple question. If you know deep down that Islam is true, when you're in the grave, would your mother be there with you? Would your father help you? In fact, Allah says in Surah Abasa, on that day, your mother and father will flee away from you. Your brother, your sister will flee away from you. You're by yourself. What excuse can you give in front of your Lord? But can you give me the question again? If you know... If you know deep down that Islam is true, when you're in the grave, because we all know we're going to die one day, right? Yeah. yeah. This is something that we know for certain, that we are going to die. Would your parents help you in the grave? Well, when of course not, I'm dead. Of course. So follow the truth. Yeah. Even if, even if the truth hurts against your family, against your friends, accept the truth. Because Allah says in the Quran, Allah says, Oh, you believe? Stand as witnesses, uh, stand witnesses for justice, even if it's against yourself, yourself your even mother, against your parents. So we should follow the truth. Yeah. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean that we should disrespect our parents. No, no, not at all. No, there is a place that we should obey parents as long as the parents don't tell us to disobey uh, Islamic teachings. Right. So what we say is follow the truth, because at the end of the day, you're going to be you're going to be under six foot. Your parents are not going to help you when the angel of death comes and, and you, you have two angels that's going to ask you questions in the grave. And if you can't answer this question, it's something that is scary. So, sorry, one second, one second. So what happened is, I can give you many proofs. In fact, why does Allah give you proofs after proofs after proofs? Do you know why? Because Allah says that we do not punish a nation until we send a messenger. Meaning that, look, if the message of Islam was not conveyed to you and you die upon that state, then you're not accountable. God will give you a, 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 a different test. God will give you a chance. But the fact that now you heard the message of Islam that's conveyed to you, if you know that Islam is true and you don't accept it, then that's between you and God. That means there is eternal paradise, there is eternal hell. Now, the thing is, for me, in my opinion, the Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, character is enough. Because when you look at his lifestyle, even his enemies, they, they called him Asadiq al Amin, the honest, the trustworthy. An honest and trustworthy person. Because he received the first revelation of the Quran at the, at the age of 40. Before 40 years, all the enemies of the Prophet, they all said he's the truth, he's the honest. You're telling me that in one night he's going to be the biggest lie in history saying he's a prophet? This doesn't make sense. So for me, the Prophet's character is enough for me to accept that he's a prophet of God. But however, why does Allah give more proofs? Because it's to establish the proof against the person. That's the reason why God gives you many proofs. So, okay, I believe in the Abrahamic religion because it's the most written about and like yeah. preserved. Okay. But then, what's, Wa the, what's the stop me now being like, okay, I've read the Quran yeah. and I've read the Bible. Okay. And I believe in the Abrahamic like religion and I just, I agree more with okay. what is written in the Bible. I don't agree with the Abrahamic religion. Uh, okay, um, Term. I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Allah says in the Quran in chapter 3, verse 67, that Abraham was not a Jew nor was a Christian. He was a Hanif Muslim. A Hanif meaning he inclined towards the oneness of God and he did not worship idols and he was a Muslim. A Muslim is a person who submits to the will of the one true God alone, right? So this was the religion of all the prophets, including Abraham. Abraham was not a Jew because a, a Jew, it comes from the term Judah, which was one of the sons of Israel. But Abraham came before Israel. In fact, Abraham's grandson was Israel, so he cannot be a Jew. Abraham cannot be a Christian because the, the, term, the term Christian came after the time of Jesus. What was his religion? What was the religion of all the prophets and messengers? To submit oneself to Allah alone while you do not associate any partners with him. That is Islam. Islam comes from the root word Istislam, which means submission. This was the religion of all the prophets. Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon all of them. Yeah. And and by the way, yeah, and by the way, you spoke about the Bible and all of this. Yeah, there are some similarities, but as Muslims, we believe in all the prophets. The difference is all the previous prophets, they were sent for their people and for their time. But the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent for everyone. As Allah says in the Quran in chapter 21, verse 107, We have sent you not on Muhammad except as a mercy to all the worlds. Allah says in chapter 34, verse 28, we have sent you not on Muhammad except as a universal messenger, giving glad tidings and warning people against sin. So they were, so the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, 
He was not only sent for the Jews, for the Arabs, he was sent for the whole of humanity for all times. The other prophets that Jesus, Abraham, they were sent for their people. As Allah says in the Quran in chapter 61, verse number, I think six or nine, I'm not sure. That doesn't make sense to me that you say, yeah. oh, he, he sent them for all people yeah. because Quran, the Quran always talks about, I don't know, I haven't read the Quran, but yeah, yeah. maybe it's coming from misinformation, but sure, sure. I do hear that they always talk about the fact that like Kafirs are so like looked down upon and um, like... Sorry, say that again, I, I didn't catch it, sorry. I know you were saying the... the Quran was sent for all them. Sorry, Muhammad was sent for all people. Were you saying something about it was sent? Yeah, the message was message the message was is for all people. Okay, yes. that, sorry, I misunderstood what yeah. I was going to say. But yeah, I was no problem. Talk about actually, because, I'm a bit because, overwhelmed. Because Jesus, because Jesus was not sent to you. Because even even in the even in in the, even in the Bible, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter fifteen, verse twenty-four, Jesus says, "I have not been sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel." And this also agrees with the Quran, because Allah says, "What if Qala Isa bin Maryam ya bani Israel?" Inni Rasulullah ilaykum. When we sent Jesus, son of Mary, saying, "O children of Israel, indeed, I am the messenger of Allah sent to you." So his message, uh, his legislation that he came with, which is the Injil, the Gospel, was only for their people for their time. However, the message is still the same, theology aspect. There's only one God, worship him alone, do not uh, ascribe any partners with him. However, in different times, different prophets, they were given different legislation, different messengers. They were given different legislation. But Islam, uh, but Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he came with the final legislation, which is suitable for all places and all times. So Islam came here to preserve five things. Islam came to preserve religion. So meaning that, you know, you worship God alone, do not ascribe any partners with him. God has given us a purpose. Now you would see that if we don't fulfill our purpose, the other four, you will see there's vices, right? Islam also came here to preserve uh, wealth. That's the reason why interest and gambling is prohibited. Islam came, here to pre um, Islam came here to preserve intellect. That's the reason why alcohol, cocaine, drugs are prohibited. Islam also came here to preserve life. That's the reason why committing suicide and killing innocent people is prohibited. And Islam came here to preserve family. That's the reason why you know, fornication, adultery, having sex outside marriage is prohibited. Because you know, studies have shown, um, in fact, even Ian Duncan Smith, you know Ian Duncan Smith? The, the, even he said, um, those delinquents who are in jail, uh, they're, they're nine times more likely to, make, to, to commit crimes because they come from broken homes. So you see, when you have an unstable family home, uh, broken home, you have an unstable society. When you have an unstable society, you have an unstable nation. And then you see many crimes. So Islam came here to preserve family, your lineage. Get married, have children, and then you have responsibility. So that's what Islam came here to, pre to preserve. Islam also came to eradicate oppression. And the greatest oppression is that you worship besides Allah, that you worship Him alone. Why would you worship a creation that cannot benefit you nor harm you? If I was, if I was to give you, like if somebody worshiped this bottle, if I drop this bottle, it's gonna break. Why is he worthy to be worshiped? Why is Jesus worthy to be worshipped? Why is Muhammad worthy to be worshipped? But I think Jesus is Jesus yep. is a God. Though. He is. He, he, I'm talking from a, from a Christian perspective. I'm not a Christian, okay. but they believe it, like in the Holy Spirit. You couldn't say. But does like, that make sense to you? Say like, oh, he's a human. Here, he's gonna die tomorrow. But does that make sense to you that Jesus is God? Yes, it does. How? Okay. So it I, makes, can, I, I, I can kill God. Think about this meme. Yeah. Like, think about this meme, so, right? Like, if Jesus is God, look, look, you this, this yeah, is what yeah. I do find this is the thing. Go on, go on, go on. Often Muslims will be like, yes. okay, Jesus is a human. How could he worship a human? And I'm not even Christian, but I'm like, I just he, he it's wasn't. It's not. It's human, not. Like, uh, the, the the term worship in uh, worship uh, means that you glorify and you venerate God alone, and you, and that uh, He alone deserves to be praised and be grateful to, right? You, you know that God, he's perfect in all of his attributes, correct? God is all-powerful. Yeah. You hear God is all-powerful, right? What does all-powerful mean? Do you know what it means, all-powerful? Well, all-knowing, all-powerful, but then people, but then this is, it gets, didn't they let, say let, that about Jesus? No, no, no. Even Christians would tell you that God is, God is all-powerful, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, all-powerful meaning he has power over all his creation. Yeah. But according to the Christians, they believe that Jesus is supposed to be God, was beaten up by the Romans. How can you? How can? How does that show that Jesus is all powerful? That means he's not God. Also, Jacob. Be, uh, Jacob wrestling with God. Defeated, uh, yeah, defeated. Yeah. So this doesn't make sense. God is all knowing, correct? He knows the past, present, future, as well as hypothetical situations. Yeah. But when you read the Bible in Mark chapter thirteen, verse thirty-two, Jesus does not even know the hour. 
look, I don't believe Jesus. I don't believe in Christianity, I don't. But I was just playing devil's advocate. No, but we, no, no, please don't play a devil's advocate. Just be honest. Because the, the reason why is because um, I could play devil's advocate of a, of a Hindu, but I don't believe in Hinduism. Yeah. You get it? I know, but it if helps me. It helps. It, 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 I, I know. No, no, the thing is, no, no, the thing is, I have endless curiosity. I can't just be like, okay, okay. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. For me, every single time someone says something to me, I think okay. about the other opinion. Yeah, no, 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 of course. But the, the thing is this, the core message of all the prophets and messengers is the oneness of God. Yeah, how does that prove it's true? Wait, wait. It can have a similar message. No, no, we believe that every every prophet was sent to every nation. Yeah? So it's possible that a, uh, that, that a prophet was sent to a Hindu nation. There's no problem. But There's no evidence we, of that. Huh? There's no evidence of a message. Being well, our evidence is the Quran. Yeah. So first falsify the Quran, then we can discuss. So the point is that the point is this, let's not play devil's advocate, right? Let's go by what makes sense to you. Does it make sense to you that Jesus is God? No, what we Muslims believe that Jesus is one of the mightiest messengers of God, but he's not God, he's a slave of God, he's the Messiah. Yeah, and he propagate the same message of all the previous prophets that worship God alone. You're not ascribing any partners with him. Uh, it, seems Simple. Like, it seems like you're trying to avoid what the most important, the yeah. most fundamental bit of the quick yeah. understanding is. Do you understand? Like, um, as Brother Rehan was saying, you've already admitted that there is only one true creator. You've already admitted that. That he's the creator of the universe, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but then, then every time when he answers it, you, you keep moving the goalposts. Do you understand? But I give and, it. I, what, what I, I, yeah, I, I yeah. totally understand what you, you know. Once, um, yeah. I understand what you're, yeah, you know, yeah. you've got so many questions in your mind or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you end up being a uh, devil's advocate. But what I'm saying is, yeah. we deal with Christian all the time. So we know how we treat them. But if you yeah. were to have your own questions, don't represent anybody. If you have your own question and, and he has fully met that uh, uh, understanding of yours, yeah. then why don't you accept it? You okay, bro? The reason so, I sorry. haven't... I, I, this one, this one. Bro. The reason that, I, I couldn't bro. accept it in like yeah, a 15-minute like yeah, 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 talk is yeah. because yeah. it's so complex. Yeah, it is. And okay. for me, I can... It's going to take years for me to come up with you've, a... You've already... You've already um, accepted the first half of the Shahada, which is the uh, Declaration of Faith, uh, which is La ilaha illallah, there yeah. is no God, but the Almighty God. There is none worthy to be worshipped. Yeah, yeah. 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 You've I already accepted that. that. But what, the other thing sorry, is sorry, the Prophet Muhammad. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My, my point is this, Mimi, right? What I've given you, I've given you proofs yeah, of why yeah. Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God. I, you know, you're talking about God that's, that's hard, trying that's to preserve hard. the world by, you know, making us like clean humans by not like okay. setting us rules. Like that all okay. makes sense to me. Okay. I was raised in a way, uh, right. and I have a like moral compass where, yeah. which aligns with this love, right? Yes, yeah, the fitrah, fitrah, yes, natural disposition. The thing that makes me, that stops me from submitting. What's stopping you? Yes, I want to know. Is I don't believe you the, the, the idea that wait, wait. the thing that's stopping me from submitting is I is the idea that God. Ah, I don't. But if, if but if Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger of God, then why would you not follow his teachings? Yeah. If you know he's the prophet of God, whatever he prescribed for you is best for you. That's but the that's that, what I, I don't. Yeah. Sorry to uh, shout. It's like yeah. I, by, by the way, there are a lot of there are a lot of misconceptions about women in Islam, right? I know that. There are a lot of misconceptions. In fact, in fact, let me tell you this, right? I went to Umrah. Umrah is like a minor pilgrimage in, in Saudi Arabia, and I went with my sister. I went with my elderly sister, and when we went to Makkah, Medina, do you know what she told me? It, it, we we pray five times a day. So the first prayer is Fajr time, Salat al-Fajr, which is uh, before dawn. So we're talking about like four in the morning. And that that particular night, I was really tired. So I said to my sister, look, could you go by yourself? Like, she said, no problem. The next morning when I woke up, I told her, did you feel safe? She said, I felt so safe. Yeah. I felt so safe. And I asked her, did any men, did they look at you? Lost? No. Why? Because Islam teaches you the ethics. Islam teaches the ethics that as a, uh, because Allah says in chapter 24, verse 30, uh, tell the believing men to lower your gaze and guard your modesty. Allah also says to the women that tell the believing women to lower your gaze and guard your modesty, right? So when you, you see the fruits of Islam, my sister felt so safe at four in the morning. Would you let your mother go at four in the morning here? What's gonna to happen to her? I 
I would say, you know, I understand modesty. I, I, yeah. I think in so many ways, yeah. like Islam yeah. it does preserve women's rights. I don't even want to go into that. Like my different But what's stopping you to become that? Muslim? That's what I want to know. The thing that's stopping me from becoming Muslim is I don't believe, when I go, when I imagine myself going down to pray, I find it hard to to believe that I'm going into heaven where there's going to be five angels where, you know, I, I, I So you're talking about the aspects of the unseen? Yes, the okay. aspects of the unseen. Right, right, right. First, 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 of, first of all, first of all, if you accept that Prophet Muhammad is the last and final messenger of God, then rationally speaking, whatever he's saying and whatever he's been taught by God is true, correct? Logically speaking, right? Yeah. Okay. For ex and uh, hell is true, then paradise is true, right? That's the whole point. If you do not believe in the afterlife, Okay, as a Muslim, prove to me that Prophet Muhammad is a false prophet. Prove to me he's a false prophet. Then I'll leave Islam. Then I will not believe in the hereafter anymore. But the fact that I've given you so many proofs, the Quran is the living miracle. Nobody's met the challenge. The fact that you will not find a single contradiction. Uh, sorry. What's yeah, there's a challenge, a linguistic miracle, uh, linguistic challenge. And I explained to you already. I'll speak to you later. Uh, also, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his character, his honesty, yeah, his truthfulness. This is well attested in history. In fact, we know him. We know him the most. Even Patricia Crone, who was one of the, you know, she had some, she was a, a big critic of Islam. She says, we know more about Muhammad than Buddha. And even the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we even know how even he used to sleep, how even, how even he used to have a shower. Do you know what the Prime Minister does in his home? No. Well, of course, I don't worship the... No, no, that's not the, no, we don't worship Muhammad, by the way. We believe he's the messenger of oh, God. Yeah, yeah. That he's the best role model. Why? Because he's the best worshipper to God. He's our role model, right? So what we say is that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he gave many prophecies. And prophecies meaning the, the, the future events, what's coming in the future. Now you know that no human beings know what's going to happen in the future unless he receives a revelation from God, because God is all-knowing. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said that one of the signs of the Day of Judgment is when barefooted, destitute shepherds will compete each other in constructing two buildings. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was referring to the Bedouin Arabs. So there's two different types of Arabs. You have the city Arabs and the Bedouin Arabs. The city Arabs was the prophet, peace be upon him, because he lived in an environment where there was a population and there was some sort of building, yeah? He's talking about the Bedouin Arabs, those who are desert dwellers, right? Um, you know, they're barefooted, they're poor, they, they had no civilization. I want to ask you this question, Mimi. Where is the tallest building? Dubai. Dubai. Now, if you watch the documentary, Abu Dhabi, 1968 documentary, you would be shocked that even in the 60s, they were poor, they were destitute. Within a single generation, they became the kings and the, and the princes. And by the way, they were desert, they were Bedouin Arabs. And by the way, even Imam Nawawi, may Allah mercy him, in the, I think he lived in the 12th century. So this was like 1,200 years ago, right? When he read this hadith, he said that, look, this is quite astonishing that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he's saying that the Bedouin Arabs, they're gonna construct two buildings. But because he's a prophet of God, and he's telling the truth, we believe in it. Now I can show you a photo of how Dubai looked like 30 years ago. Okay, this yeah. is another thing that yeah. stops me from submitting to Islam. And by the way, I'm not okay. coming here saying this is why I don't believe it. I'm trying to understand it. I'm trying to right. even come to an yeah, idea no of maybe believing it. No problem. But when I look at like culture, and I know this is culture and it's not to do with religion, but I feel like there's a lot of like it's a question Arab of submission. Supremacy and, no, like, no Arab supremacy. No. Yeah, like there's a lot of like racism within Islam where people like no. white supremacy don't think the thing people are like obsessed with the Arabs. There is no racism in Islam. Yes. Sorry, one second, one second, one second. There is there is no racism in Islam. Allah says in the Quran in chapter 14, 49, verse number 13. Allah says, Oh mankind, we created you from a single pair of male and female, and we have made you into nations and tribes so that you may get to know each other, not that you shall despise each other. And the one who is the, the one who is most noble in the sight of Allah is the one who has taqwa, meaning you have God consciousness, you're being dutiful to God. So the, the, the superiority in the sight of God is not your sex, is not your gender, is not your color, is based upon. And, and also, yeah, Barakafi. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said in his final sermon that no Arab is superior over non Arab. Neither non Arab is superior over an Arab. A white person is not superior over a black person. Neither a black person is superior over a white person, but their piety. And that's only known by God, right? So there is no racism in Islam. In fact, Islam is the only religion that is anti racism. Other religions are. Um, non-racist, meaning that they, 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 they didn't comment anything about racism. Islam is the only religion that's against racism. 
So this is the beauty about Islam. When you go to Hajj, when you go to the final, uh, have you seen the Hajj, the pilgrimage? There has been, yeah. like, there are quotes in the, in, in the Quran which are racist. And I know that's like, for the example? same in the Bible, but I, I'm saying, I, I would say, like, I, I know that there's some sort of anti-racist quotes, but there are also racist quotes, and there are, uh, like... I think you're just making that up. No, no, yeah. we've all just... Yeah, 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 sure, yeah, sure. sure. I'm, not, I'm not making that up, I, I, I like to... No, 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 talk about it. Are you Muslim? No, I don't, I'm okay, not, I don't... Fine. No, there's no racism. give it right now, but it's only because I've listened to... The reason I've been to... Yeah. I've been listening to Speaker's Corner, yeah, yeah. like, debates online. Okay. And, um... Yeah, Do you but at least remember some of the verses? That, that's fine, no problem. No it problem. doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm, I'm not even trying to. That's not what I'm trying to debate to. I'm trying to debate. I'm trying to think about. There is myself. no racism in Islam. No, I understand that. There is I no racism that. whatsoever. But what you just said, there's no verse or anything like that in the Quran. No, no in the Hadith as well. Also, remember that. Islam no in the Hadith. I know you're talking about the raising head. This is the this is the this is the the, the terminologies that they used at that time. It wasn't derogatory. So you have to understand the urf, the custom at that time. So please don't speak without knowledge. So look, no, no, because I, I, know, I know, I know, I know people always trying to find racism. There is no racism. In fact, in fact, even even I'm supporting you. I say that. So why are you bringing up then? Even Dr. Craig Constantine, who is a professor in Rice University, he even said Islam is the Muhammad is the only man in history that spoke against racism. Okay, Jesus did not. Yeah, exactly. So would you say exactly. most of so like like yeah? So the two things. I was like the submission, but that's something I think I could maybe get over. Okay, no. But then yeah, the second right. thing okay, is fine, the culture, fine. and I know that culture is to do with religion, but yes. there is a culture that is it's like it's so it's it, I, I think half of the culture is beautiful and wonderful, but half of the culture is like it's women are heavily critiqued, like just critiqued by other. Based girls. on what? Based on what? Just like critiqued on. Uh, I knew that was coming up. I know, I know, I know, I know. On mistakes that they make, and it's not. I know that people want the best for them. They're asking them, sister, sister, can you like do what's best? But I think that's difficult. Sometimes you get called like, you know, you get told that you're. Just like your he women are heavily critiqued. Have you ever? Have you? The, have the, the culture have nothing to do with Islam. Have you ever spoken? Like, have, 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 yeah. yeah. have, have, have you ever? Have, have you ever spoken? Have you ever spoke to a Muslim woman? Yeah, I have. That was lovely. That was like wonderful people. Did they say that Islam oppresses? And by the way, I can't no, just. I don't think Islam oppresses them. I, I never fact, didn't let, say look, that. Look, let me give you studies as well. Let me give you studies. The majority of the reverts are women. Not men. I know, I know, like 80%. Yeah, in fact, yeah. In, in Swansea University, they say six out of 10, I think it's increased now. So if Islam oppresses women, why are European women accepting Islam? Yeah. I didn't say that they did. So what's stopping you to become Muslim? <laughs> I'm not forcing you, there's no, there's, there's no force. Saying, Take your time, I, take your time. Okay, forgetting about, it, it is, it's the idea that before I was born, okay. I was nothing. What's to say that when I die, I'm not nothing? No, you already answered that. No, already Allah answers that. He, no, no, no. The question, look, let's go back to the I basics. Know, but it, do you yeah. know the main thing? I figured okay. it out. The main thing is my like spiritual feeling. Islam gives it, look, look, Islam, look, look, the beauty about Islam is Islam aligns your sound intellect with a natural inclination. Yeah. It gives you peace of mind. Yeah. Why? Because Islam means a submission to God's will, right? And Islam is also known as Deen al Fitr, it is innate way of life. Yeah. As the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said that every child is born in Deen al Fitr, meaning every child is born with the state. Muslim. of Muslim submit to the will of God but his parents make him a Jew or a Christian or fire worshipper so we as human beings we're a product of environment yeah. but if we leave the external influences all children will accept it as the Creator but because of the society because of the parents they, uh, they, they they become a Jew or an atheist right so when you when you become a Muslim you don't convert you revert you come back to your original state you come back to your original state of submit to the one God alone and that's the reason why that's do you get that understand? Of course, I That's, understand look, yesterday, that. look, look, we were there, mashallah, yeah? Seven people took the shahada yesterday in Stratford uh, Station. What was their feeling? The feeling was they felt like, wow, something wow. like it, it, it lifted off the burden. All the burden. All the burdens yeah. off, right? And then slowly you're going to learn how to pray. You know, we don't expect you to learn overnight. In fact, when the Prophet, peace be upon him, was sent to the Arabs, they were more worse than this society. They used to drink. They used to, uh, they used to um, prostitute, they used to womanize. womanize, they used to bury the female infants alive, right? Yeah. They used to drink alcohol. But the Prophet, peace be upon him, what was his da'wah, what was his call? Focusing on the oneness of God, strengthen your faith. 
you know, you have, a, you have the afterlife to prepare. Then slowly all of your habits will go away. Because when the Prophet, peace be upon him, when he conveyed the message of Islam, the first thing, he did not prohibit alcohol first time. What he did, he focused his da'wah, he's, he's calling people to worshiping God alone. Don't worship idols, don't worship creation, worship God alone. Then slowly, slowly, as your strength, as your faith gets strengthened, it was so easy for them to leave alcohol. And that's when Allah gives the final commandment in chapter 5, verse 19, that intoxicants is prohibited. So when you become a Muslim, you know, you, you, you don't become like, nobody's perfect. You're on your own journey. Like, I, I'm not, I, like, the rules of Islam, like, I feel like I already followed them just like, un, I don't even mean to. I just had never, I just didn't grow up in a drinking house. Do you know what's amazing? Like, Do you know what's amazing? You know, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, I was sent to perfect good manners. So, yeah. good, character. good character, right? He, he came here to perfect good manners. Yeah. But we as Muslims believe that we do have some moral, comp uh, moral compass. That we do have some kindness, some mercy, right? But when you become a Muslim, you become a better person. Yeah? yeah? I don't know, do you, you, you have parents? Yeah, yeah? okay. So, before, you're a Muslim, before you, are, you were a Muslim, you may be good to your parents. When you become a Muslim, you have to be a better daughter. You have to respect them even more. In fact, the Prophet said that paradise lies beneath the feet of your mothers. When you become a wife, you become a better wife. When a, when a, when a Muslim, uh, uh, when, a, uh, when, a, uh, when a person becomes a Muslim, as a man, he has to be a good husband. Because the Prophet, peace be upon the best of you are those who are best to his wife. And I'm the best to my wife. So, Islam is a complete way of life. It teaches you even the basic stuff, how to clean yourself. You know, making sure that there's no urine on your clothes. This is the purity about Islam. It's not just going to the mosque five times a day like a ritual. It's a complete way of life. I think what you're saying has influenced me today. No and problem. I feel no problem. Like I, read this. I will. And read I will. the Quran. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I want to thank you for talking to me today. No I problem, me. It's a pleasure you. speaking to you. Thank you. It's a pleasure speaking um, to you. But, yeah. But I, I'm not saying like, sure. okay, 100%. I'm <laughs> no, 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 that's fine. That's fine. I, I want to say thank you, but I'm yeah. not going to take anything like Look, Mimi. personally or take it yeah. the wrong way. Uh, uh, no, no, exactly, bro. Yeah, yeah, okay. So one more thing before I let you go. Uh, it's a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you for taking your time. Uh, I know it, it was a bit long, but I do apologize. But you're asking so many questions, so that's why. Because uh, uh, usually I like to keep it short within 10 minutes. But because you're asking so many questions, uh, the discussion went long. But anyway, it's a pleasure speaking to you. I'll leave you one more, uh, one more thing. You know, if you know deep down that Islam is true, do not procrastinate. Because how many people left their homes and they don't come back? Because if you know deep down that Islam is true and you don't, you don't become a Muslim, what excuse can you give in front of your Lord? What excuse can you give? If you become a Muslim and you make the statement, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, that I bear witness that there's nothing worth it to be worshiping truth except Allah and Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah. If you leave the park right now, and God forbid something happens to you, you're in an accident, you're guaranteed paradise. Yeah. But if you leave this park and you know deep down Islam is true, and you die upon that state knowing Islam is true, then there's a hellfire. I get that, but then I feel like that's the idea of fear politics. There has to be fear. Because we're, uh, because we're motivated by reward and punishment. Fear is a good thing. Yeah. I, is a good thing. I, I, I get that, but that wouldn't be the reason that I went into no, 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 that's religion fine. because I'm like... No, no, that's not my point. In, in, fact, in fact, as Muslims, we should have hope Love and fear in God. Yeah, and so I not just it, yeah. not just fear, because read, there's, there's read, an extreme read, sect they believe in that. Read Quran from, with with your yeah, heart. Read the Quran. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you go to Quran, do not try to find diff, uh, mistakes. Yeah. Try to find guidance. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. ask Allah to guide you. Allah says, "The way you come to me, yeah. that's how the way I am." Yeah. Yeah. Because people go and say, "Oh, yeah. let me prove Quran say to is this, wrong." What I would say to you is, uh, no, 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 yeah, no, yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah. I know. No, it's an advice. Yeah. What, what yeah. I would say to you, Mimi, right? It's only Allah who guides him he wills. We cannot force you. Allah says, فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ لَسْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِمُصَيْتِمْ That our job is to remind, our job is to convey the message. But the guidance belongs to Allah. So if, if Allah wants to guide you, He'll guide you. If Allah wants to misguide you, then who else would, would, would guide you? So we can only convey the message of Islam. But notice this, Mimi. There is a there is day of judgment. And we will all be accountable in front of Allah. Right? Of our faith, of our deeds. And you know, if you know deep down that Islam is true, you don't take your shahada, you know what I'm really scared about for you, Mimi? We may have to testify against you. We want to testify for you on the Day of Judgment. So what I would advise you, Mimi, read the Quran. If you know deep down Islam is true, do not procrastinate. It's very easy to become Muslim. You just need someone to, uh, to, to witness. And you just have to say there's none worth to be worshipped in truth except Allah. 
and Muhammad's Messenger of Allah. However, it has to come from your own will. You can't be forced. As Allah says in the Quran in chapter 2, verse 256, La there is no compulsion in religion. So we cannot force you. However, the message has been conveyed to you and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you to the truth. Well, thank you for, for taking your time. And uh, you have a copy of the Quran, yeah? Yeah. MashaAllah. Yeah. Please read the Quran. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Okay, yeah. Take care. Have a good day. Take care. Take care. Thank you.